technicians. You just want to use mine? Do you want me to? Yeah. Wing it. My mic is slow tonight. I'm sorry. But goodness gracious, the room got so quiet so quickly. Are we excited to do some recognitions? Yes. I, I think I speak on behalf of the entire staff and the governing board when I say that this is our favorite part of the evening because we get to honor some of our most amazing students and staff. And that says a lot because they are all truly amazing. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, Mr. Marvin Morton, the principal at Temecula Middle School is going to do our first award. Mr. Mr. Morton. Yours must be connected to mine. Push the button or we're good? You're on. We're good. Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Andrea Hayek, eighth grade social science teacher, for being recognized as an Inland Empire Social Studies Educator of Excellence by the Inland Empire Council for Social Studies Teachers. Uh, Mrs. Hayek was recognized by the council back in December for her qualities as an instructor, as a leader in our district, and for, all, you know, for her passion for getting all of her students to succeed at high levels. There's, a, there's an old expression that genius is 1% uh, inspiration and 99% perspiration. And I, and I think somehow that's connected to Mrs. Hayek. I think that 1% is she expects each and every one of her students to learn at high levels. And then the 99% is that perspiration part, is her making sure that each and every one of her students meets her expectations. I've seen her work over the years with our, our special needs students, with students learning English, with just you know old-fashioned, reluctant learners. And she brings her A game every single day and uh, goes to bat for our kids. So it's just inspiring to watch. Uh, this is recognition is well deserved. So Mrs. Andrea Hayek. Yeah, I don't know if there's a certificate in front of me. I was curious. Um, thank you. I just like to, I guess, receive this on behalf of all of the people I've worked with that are an inspiration and the students and their families. Um, this is a great place to teach, and it's a pleasure. Thank you. All right, while they take a picture over there, we're going to welcome Mr. Dignan. And I believe, Mr. Dignan, you have an assistant coach with you, do you not, Mr. McTansley? No? I believe oh, that from grade Mr. Tansley is supposed to be here, but I don't. Mike? Oh, there, there he, is. he is. There he is. There's coach. If awesome. I can get the Grado Cross Country students just to stand up on that side. So, Grado Cross Country students, step on over there. So you may be aware that the girls cross country team at Great Oak High School was the CIF uh, Division I Southern Section Champions, and that the boys cross country CIF was the state champions and the Nike, Nike Cross National Sixth in the nation. So. We have a handful of those students here with us today, and so I'm gonna read through those names. Um, obviously, they're not all here because they're all home studying <laughs> and staying out of the cold. So um, this takes me back to my elementary days. So when I, when I say eyes, you clap twice. Eyes, <laughs> try that again. Eyes, <laughs> every time I read a name, you clap twice. <laughs> Ready, Kate Abraham, <laughs> Jacob Baker, <laughs> Ava Beeson, <laughs> Dallin Bitten, Jacob Brown. If I read your name, you walk past the front. <laughs> Weston Brown. Logan Carter. Mitzi Casillas. Milani Castillo. Mark Cortez. Ramses Cortez. Logan Cunanan. Cassandra De La Cruz. Jaden De La Torre. Emily Donofrio. Jacob Dugan. Nora Elbanya. Austin Elkins, Aisling Fabian, Marco Franco, Owen Fuller, Kaya Gaffney, Kelly Gaffney, Nicholas Gaffney, Addison Green, Christian Gump, Diesel Harmon, Ivory Harmon, Gabriel Hernandez, Abigail Huth, 
Nayali Hoon, Gabriela Ibanez, Aiden Jasereno, Colin Jean Pierre, David Kanikowski, Jeffrey Cameron Keeney, Kaylee Krause, Sydney Lolloway, Nathan Lennox, Ashley Lopez, Carson Lynch, Kai Morata, Bruno Martinez Pinto. Stay with me. It's reading comprehension. Jack McKiernan, Yumi Medcalf, Hannah Miller, Jordan Myers, Malin Nunez, Tristan Acasio, Oliver O'Neill, Brooklyn Osborne, Brian Osborne, Kaylin Osborne, Kellen Paez, Jack Paradise, Turner Quatrano, Mia Rodriguez, Gabriel Rodriguez, Michael Rodriguez, Audrey Rojas, Brianna Ropaki, Lauren Ropaki, Isaac Shilo Rubokava. My apologies, Isaac. Ruben Sanchez, August Schultz, Logan Simpson, Avery Smith, Zachary Smith, Kenneth Tang, Michael Tansley, Amaya Telly, Isaiah Telez, Devlin Torza, Derek Trinidad, Joel Upshar, Diego Valdez Gonzalez, and Isaiah Vassar. Let's give it up for the great old cross country teams. While Great Oak is taking their photos, could we have Mr. Balloweg and Mrs. Loza up to the podium? Good evening. That's a hard act to follow. I am here to um, recognize and acknowledge that our district has, for the past 10 years, um, has uh, consistently hosted a spelling bee with participants from both elementary school and high school. And I want to recognize that because there was some time prior to those past 10 years when we did not um, support this in our district. And so it, I think it's just so important to allow our students to compete academically and to put this emphasis in these academic programs. And I wanted um, to make sure that I give a special recognition to um, one of our staff members, Michelle Loza, who's standing at my right, uh, who has single-handedly grabbed this competition and improved upon what Mindy Morgan and Terry um, uh, Hubbard had built at the original part of this and has grown this so that 17 of our schools are now participating um, in the competition itself. And that has a lot to do with the adults in this district and the fact that Michelle is talented and is able to galvanize them. And so with that being said, Michelle's gonna come forward and give you some information about who won and who's representing us at the next level. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you, Dr. McClay, our cabinet, and our board. Uh, on January 18th, the TVUSD District Spelling Bee was held at Day Middle School. 17 schools competed, as Joe mentioned, with two participants for 34 contestants, the most we've ever had. And it was our first live bee since the pandemic. We were on an online platform the last couple of years, so it was very exciting. We had volunteers from our high school ASB teams as well as special guests overseeing the event. Amber Lane was our B master. Joe Balowag was our head judge. Our other judges were Anna Tapley, Rafael Loza, and Crystal Fielstra, some of which are here tonight. Um, our arbitrator recorder was Elizabeth Areza. After a total of nine rounds, Ryan Scott, seventh grader at Gardner Middle School, and site coordinator is Josephine Pettit, so if you're here tonight, stand and be recognized. One with the word vermicide, and in round eight with arsenic in round nine. So uh, Ryan will have, his name has been added to our perpetual plaque, which will be housed at Gardner Middle School until next year, 
until we have our next winner. So I would like uh, Ryan to come up at this time, and if, I don't know if Mr. McKee. Ryan had such a way of grabbing the microphone when he came up that we just knew he was a rock star, and it turns out, yes, Ryan is actually in a band. So Ryan, I'll let you hold this for our picture today, but we will need that back. And then in our second place, we have Jack Callahan, who is an eighth grader at Bella Vista, Amy Wan, principal, and Dana Hayes, site coordinator. If you're here, stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Jack, are you with us tonight? No Jack tonight? Oh, well. Well, that's unfortunate. Ryan will go on to compete at the RCOE Spelling Bee on March 23rd in Moreno Valley. If he finals there, he will go on to the Scripps National Bee at the end of May in Maryland. If he cannot, then Jack will attend in his place. So uh, congratulations, Ryan. Good evening, Dr. Kamrowski, members of the board and community members. I'm Frank Garce. I am the proud Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources Development, and it is my joy to present to you some honorees. This is um, one of my favorite awards to present, and it's an honor for me to introduce some amazing people. Every year, the Riverside County Office of Education heads the County Employee of the Year Awards. We solicited here at the district nominations and got hundreds of responses from our staff and, and so we just have amazing employees here, and the following are the district recipients in the different classifications. So I'd like to ask Amber Ballesteros, Classified Employee of the Year, to join me, please. <laughs> Let me share a few things about Amber. She's a counseling technician at Chaparral High School. She supports students who failed multiple classes during the pandemic's online learning and even struggled when in-person instruction started again. She communicates with the counselors, teachers, students, and parents. She monitors student progress and attendance. She does a fabulous job of keeping up with this part and all other responsibilities on her plate. We are in awe of her work ethic and her ability to connect with the students. Congratulations to our Classified Employee of the Year, Ms. Amber Ballesteros. <laughs> Um, thank you. Uh, I love my job. I love where I work, um, partly to Principal Miller, who makes um, work uh, a place that you want to be. And um, I love my job. Puma Pride. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. Next, I'd like to uh, have Ms. Jenny Romero, Site Support Staff Member of the Year, join me up here in the podium. Ms. Romero is a teacher on special assignment for our English Learner Program. Jenny is the heart of the EL program and supports uh, students we have at all of our campuses. As a teacher on special assignment, she's been instrumental in developing the parent community through highly effective DLACs and ELACs. When she sees a need, she thinks with innovation to address it for the sake of the students. She has been able to utilize technology to provide instruction for newcomers at multiple sites. She is integral in supporting designated and integrated English instruction on campus, supports teachers by partnering to plan and model lessons. She truly cares for and loves our TVUSD English learners. I give you our site support staff member of the year, Ms. Jenny Romero. Thank you for this recognition and for the honor of holding the position that I have. And thank you to my AP, Crystal, her knowledge and wisdom and just um, dedication to get things done is so appreciated in my directors, Anna and Emily. Next, our Counselor of the Year Award from Dame Middle School. I'd like to welcome Ms. Jennifer Krumer. <laughs> Jennifer works and carries out her duties with Excellence. She's, what sets her apart and makes her worthy of this nomination is her student-centeredness and desire to make a difference in the lives of her students. Whether it's adjusting a student's schedule, meeting one-on-one -on -one with a student, or doing whole group presentations, everything she does is focus on helping her students succeed academically, socially, and mentally. We're proud to announce that our Counselor of the Year is Ms. Jennifer Krumer. Thank you. <laughs> I'm short. 
Um, I'm proud to represent my fellow counselors. We have amazing people that do what I love my job too. Thank you for saying that. Um, and I appreciate my admin for letting us do that. My admin present, Rob, and my previous admins that are all over the place. They are wonderful people. Um, counselors are really important. We um, support our students and I'm honored to represent my field. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Kloomer. Next, I'd like to welcome up to the podium our Classified Administrator of the Year, Director in Human Resources Development, Ms. Tiffany Martinez. <laughs> Tiffany is always available when needed. She's one uh, person we can count on to pick up her phone and brainstorm with us. She has a very difficult job, is constantly investigating, solving employee concerns, and she does it with a smile and keeps people in the loop along the way. She's one of the hardest working individuals. I know that firsthand, really. She always cares about doing things with integrity and values fairness and respect. She truly is someone who makes our jobs easier because she carries a lot of responsibility in many different ways. We are proud to announce our Classified Administrator of the Year's Ms. Tiffany Martinez. Thank you so much for this award. I feel truly blessed to work in this district with amazing people. And I just have one thing to say. I love my HRD family. And I know that this award would not be possible without their support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for the shout out, Tiffany. I appreciate that. Next, our Certificate Administrator of the Year is our Director of Student Support Services, Mr. Jess Caponegro. <laughs> you got a fan crowd over there, man. Jess is always very responsive and student-centered. He's knowledgeable and always willing to assist with student concerns, no matter what the time of day. He's a pleasure to work with. He's beyond dedicated to making SWS a su successful department that provides support to staff, parents, and the community. He cares about the success of students and takes pride in supporting the needs of our most at-promised youth. Congratulations to our Certificate Administrator of the Year, Jess Caponegro. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. McClay, for the, being, having the original idea of student welfare and success. Thank you to Mrs. Velez for so many years of leadership, guidance, support, and just leading us to where we're at now. Mrs. Deus, for everything she has done in terms of the support that she's given us this year and the guidance and leadership we've had from her. My partners, Donna, Kelly, um, it's a team effort. Sonia, who is the glue that really keeps our whole department running. So it's always a team effort, student welfare success, and I feel very fortunate to be part of this team and to have um, just work with the people I get to work with on a daily basis. So thank you so much. And last but certainly not least, our principal of the year. What an amazing choice from Abby Ranke Elementary School, Miss Natalie Waddell. Natalie has a true passion for kids. She's student-centered. She has a positive attitude. She's excelled in her craft. Her leadership has tr truly transformed the climate, culture, and learning of the entire community. She has incredible relationships with all parents, which has enabled her to fold them easily into the learning community. She's a force to be reckoned with. She puts her whole heart into everything she does and always does what's best for students. Her energy is infectious, and she has led her sight with grace, compassion, and strength the past several years. She welcomes students at drop-off, knows them by first name. She cares about kids, does everything she can to make sure her kids are supported. She creates a positive and amazing culture. She inspires students and all those around her to thrive and be the best that they can be. I can go on and on because there's a lot here. Congratulations to our Principal of the Year, Miss Natalie Waddell. <laughs> Well, I too love my job. It's no better place to be than on an elementary campus with 650 kids. All you have to do is go out on recess duty and you can see all the pure joy of just kids. But this wouldn't be possible without all my admin team. We have such great leaders, many of you that I have worked under and Mr. Dignan's one of the principals that I got to work under as well, and I thank them for all that I've learned. And Dr. McClay, thank you for hiring me 17 years ago. I appreciate it. But thank you all. I love my job, and thanks for having me be with this recognition. 
And let's hear it one more time for all of our employees of the year. Thank you. Okay, so thank you for joining us tonight for recognitions. We're going to ask two last things. One, if all of the employees of the year would come on up for a joint picture with all of you together. And then secondly, as we depart from recognitions, we're going to open all the doors for the folks here for open session. However, the board is going to go into closed session. We've got about 15 or so minutes left to finish before we come back in, but we want to get folks in out of the rain and the cold. So we're going to open up and we will go elsewhere, okay? Certificates, so just letting you know they'll get certificates and you guys okay. can take it. Thank you. Okay. Thank like you. Your natural color? A uh, little bit. Look at you. It's beautiful.
You'll each grab a mic, and all you do is turn it on, okay? And then you guys can each hold one of these if you want, and it helps, okay? So you're just, the flag's gonna be right there. So you're just gonna walk over here, turn this on, put it here, and read the code. Do you say please join us Um, I think they'll announce you, but you can do whatever, do whatever comes natural. Okay, thanks girls. And then we're going to give you guys some cookies and a, a certificate. Okay, cool. H attendance, we have governing board, Mrs. Allison Barclay, Mr. Danny Gonzalez, Dr. Joseph Komrowski, Mr. Stephen Schwartz, Mrs. Jennifer Wiersma. Um, Secretary of the board, we have Dr. Jody McClay, Superintendent, Mrs. Nicole Lash, Assistant Superintendent, Business Services Support, or uh, Support Services, Ms. Kimberly Velez, Assistant Superintendent, Educational Support Services, Mr. Frank Arce, Assistant Superintendent, Human Resources Development, Mrs. Nicole, Deus, Assistant Superintendent, Student Support Services. Uh, Mrs. Lene Anikabar, Executive Assistant to the Superintendent. And it's my privilege, and thank you for waiting so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lucy and Avery. Um, it, was, it was my idea to bring students on from here on after and maybe start a tradition to where they lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and we rotate schools through every board meeting. So we welcome up Avery and Lucy. Avery Gope and Lucy Conan. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. 
please, please stand. stand. Remove Put all hats and caps. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you. At approximately 9.30 p.m., the governing board will determine which of the remaining agenda items can be considered and acted upon prior to 10 p.m. and may continue all other items on which additional time is required until a future meeting. All meetings are scheduled to end at 10 p.m. Uh, item J, we're gonna read out the action taken in closed session. Closed session begin at 4 p.m. The Board of Education took the following action in closed session. It was moved by member Wiersma and seconded by member Schwartz to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the suspended expulsion for case number 258578. The vote was 5-0. It was moved by member Schwartz and seconded by member Barclay to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the suspended expulsion for case number 29. One, two, six, seven, vote five, zero. It was moved by member Schwartz and seconded by member Wiersma to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the expulsion for case number three, nine, five, two, zero. And the vote was five, zero. It was moved by member Schwartz and seconded by member Barclay to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the waiver of suspended expulsion for case number 273242 and the vote was 4-1. Conference with legal counsel existing litigation. It was moved by member Schwartz and seconded by member Gonzalez to approve the settlement agreement OAH number 20221-20609. The vote was 5-0. It was moved by member Schwartz and seconded by member Wiersma to approve the settlement agreement OAH number 2022 one one zero four one eight and the vote was five zero and i apologize but a clarification on student case number two seven three two four two mr gonzalez was the dissenting vote and that has to be stated thank you okay recognitions announcements school related organizations before the board meeting began the board recognized our Inland Empire 2022 Social Science Educator of Excellence winner, Great Oak High School's Cross Country Champions, the, the District Spelling Bee winners, and our Employees of the Year. We will um, now have the student spotlights from Chaparral High School, Summer Rashidi and Bianca Ganell. Hi everyone, I'm still Summer Rashidi, the ASB president at Chaparral High School. And I know you guys don't recognize me. I'm Bianca Ganal. I'm the senior class president, and uh, I'm substituting for Miss Avery Page tonight. February has been great to us. On Valentine's Day, we celebrated by wearing pink and red, and we gave out Hershey's hugs and kisses. It was a really sweet day. Winter sports is closing, and all our athletes did a great job this year. Special shout out to wrestling, who won CIF and are heading to state. Good luck, boys. This week, we are celebrating our spring sports during our spring sports rally at lunch. We're excited to introduce the teams on the quad and play fun competition-like games between the captains. To kick off our spring sports seasons, we have a spirit week. 
Today was 2000s Day, tomorrow's character slash celebrity dress up day. Thursday is class distinction, and Friday is dress as your Snapchat Bitmoji day. I'm so excited. Me too. I love wearing pink for class distinction because it's my favorite color. Um, speaking of the senior color, we've been selling our grad bash tickets to our seniors, and it's been going well. And for our upperclassmen, we have been advertising and selling our prom tickets. Um, the prom theme will be announced at our prom expo coming up in March. Our students have really connected with staff this year. My vice president, Meral, and I have organized the staff Puma Games. Like the senior games, it's a fun game of elimination. There are over 45 staff members who are currently playing, and each staff member is assigned a target. Um, we've set up safe zones and are planning safety actions and redemption challenges. Each staff member is assigned to each other, and their goal is to tag them out. They're only safe when talking to a student, teaching, si sitting at their desk, or using the restroom. Believe me, it's more competitive than you think. The first day alone, 15 members of the staff got out. We are so excited to see who ends up being the last one standing. Speaking of our staff members, students Sophia Tran and Nate Steele interviewed our staff as a segment for our school Instagram page. I highly recommend checking it out on at Chaparral Pumas on Instagram. You'll hear some great would you rather questions and things like this have kept our staff and our students connected. Um, some more staff news. We celebrated our amazing Puma counselors last week for Counselor Appreciation Week. We made them a poster with kind, thankful words, and our staff enjoyed a coffee bar and breakfast goodies together in the office. Thank you again to all our wonderful counselors. I know the student body appreciates all their hard work, and I personally have had helpful and great encounters with each of them. Last meeting, Avery and I mentioned how we were starting dodgeball intramurals, and it's been quite the hit, literally. <laughs> Um, the gym has been full during lunch, and bracket play starts this Thursday, and I'm really excited. The spring musical is Anything Goes. Our students are so excited to watch this play, which is about a man who's on a cruise and pursuing a married woman. Talk about drama. Uh, the play is on April 20th, 21st, 27th, and the 28th. Hope to see you guys there. Um, this week and next week, our AP research students are conducting their data for their research experiments. Our wonderful teacher, Mr. Day, has been doing great leading the class, and our students have been enjoying taking surveys. The topic of my case study is opinion on school lunch and how it affects students, and Bianca's topic is the difference of academic pressure between first and second generation students. Wish us luck. Last week was Officer Appreciation Day, and we recognize Officer Bowers for his hard work. We had some of our students, administrators, and district officials give him a gift, and we took tons of pictures. Thank you for all you do, Officer Bowers. March 9th, we have Dancing with the Pumas. Over 20 varsity duos have been learning unique dance routines to present to the students and their judges. Um, the show is 7 to 9 p.m., and it's $10 to get in. We welcome you all to come watch. Either way, we'll update you how it goes. March has many exciting events coming up that we can't wait to share. Well, Summer and Avery can't wait to share. Uh, but everyone is looking forward to everything from college acceptance, showcase, dancing with the Pumas, and much more. But for now, that's all we have. Thank you, and have a Pumatastic day. <laughs> Thank you, Summer and Bianca. Next up, Noel and Elisa from Great Oak Wolfpack. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Noelle Boglin, and I'm the senior school board representative. Um, I'm just really happy to be back here again for this month, and this is... And I'm Alyssa, the junior school board representative. <laughs> All right, so starting off, we have the district choral festival, basically, um, Shap and Temecula Valley, and then a bunch of different middle schools came to Great Oak, and they just played get to get, yeah, get to know your activities. They hang out and sang songs and dance it, danced, and we also had the student-directed Valentine's Day concert, and the theme was Friend Zone. Um, recently, we had our Love Language. Basically, it's an ASL showcase where ASL 3, 4, and ASL Honor Society students performed, and they performed different breakup songs and different love songs. Um, we also had our annual variety show. It was basically our talent show. Um, the theme was Nifty 50s, and some of our leadership teachers also performed, such as Mr. Skaggs. Um, we had uh, Drumline and Color Guard had their preview of Champions. The, um, they performed the shows that they're going to perform later on in the competitive season. Um, and the Guard campers from the different middle schools also performed. Um, our WGI Percussion and Winds Regional Drumline competition will be hosted here at Great Oak this Saturday. 
and on Sunday, they will have the WGI finals. Our mock trial team won first, second, and fourth round. They had an award ceremony for, with medals given to Damian Milton, Jack Dickinson, Daniel Ortega, and Kyla Savage. They made it to playoffs, and they also made it to the Elite Eight for the first time in six years, but unfortunately they lost. But they did amazing, and we're really, really proud of them. And we also have coming up in March, we have Mamma Mia. We're super excited for it. It's going to be March 16th, 17th, and 18th at 7, with the matinee on the 18th at 1. Um, I'm really excited for it because I'll be interpreting for the show, and I just can't wait for everyone to be there. On February 15th was our Black History Celebration Day, uh, Decoration Day, uh, held by BSU. Students on campus volunteered to help decorate for the celebration taking place on February 16th. Uh, decorations included streamers around the school, hanging posters, and chalk art around campus. Um, on February 16th was the celebration day, held, also held by BSU, STEP, and Drumline. Uh, there were performances held by Drumline and STEP. Um, there was also a presentation held by BSU, and it was also a dress-up day that day, where the ninth graders wore yellow, 10th graders wore green, 11th wore black, and 12th wore red. On February 10th um, was the Vista Murrieta Unified Games. The game was bocce ball. Um, it was held at Vista, and our, our, <laughs> our team won fifth place. Um, on February 21st, which was today, um, was our future Wolfpack in the making. This event is held annually for the incoming eighth graders. We had four different rotations created for the eighth graders to become more familiar with our school. The first rotation was a different VAPA program such as drama, band, dance, choir, and improv. The second rotation was about counseling and picking out classes for their next year. The third rotation was the students visiting the visiting the different club, sports, VAPA, and program stations. The last rotation was a Q&A with the WSB president, the junior WSB presidents, and the Red Wave commissioners. After all groups have visited the rotations, everyone gathered back together and went over their favorite parts and did the Wolfpack shadow at the end. Of um, we also had our sidewalk art event. This event is held once a semester, it also follows it also allows fellow Grade Oak students to let their creativity loose and enjoy time listening to music, creating beautiful chalk art, and hanging out with friends. This year, we had some amazing pieces, ranging from beautiful sea creatures to amazing portraits. Thank you so much for having us again. See you all at the next meeting in March. Go Wolfpack. Um, X from Temecula Valley High School, um, Lena and Alicia. Hello, we're excited to be back once again to share another recap of everything that's been happening on our campus. I'm Lana. And I'm Alicia. So last Thursday we had our annual fashion show. It was packed with students and their families attending. Each outfit was very unique, and both the designers and the models did such a creative job with the outfits, thanks to donations from our clothing drive. And every outfit contained pieces that were donated in our most recent clothing drive. So also, the fashion show was for students only, but one of our teachers, Mr. Hyde, made a special surprise appearance on the runway. It was such a fun and awesome way to get even more students involved in an activity on campus. This week is a fun one. We've got a lot going on. Um, we have all of our club and sports representatives giving a show and little intel about what they do on our TVHS campus for our future ninth graders. Um, okay, it might not be an actual show, but they are definitely selling their program for our clubs and campuses on Thursday. We've got it all, tours, presentations, and of course, a gallery walk that showcases all of, um, sorry, um, to talk to the many student representatives. We will also leave the setup up for that night as well when we let the new club parents take a look at everything we offer. It's a great time for our students to make a plan for their time at TV and talk with their parents about what they want to be a part of. 
We also handed out everyone's matchmaking results. At the beginning of the month, our students took a quiz that acted as a personality quiz, asking them questions about how they would choose to spend their Friday night, for example, how they like their burger, and whether or not they're a night owl or an early bird. Everyone is then matched up with their most and least compatible, and students got a list of about 15 for each category. Our winter athletics is finishing up, and our girls' soccer were Southwest League champs for the sixth year in a row. And our impressive wrestling team were impressive again. 13 wrestlers went to CIF, 11, 11 moved on to Masters, and seven are headed to the new state championships this weekend. A shout out to Aiden Munoz, Malachi Spiritu, Cameron Phillips, Matthew Porras Diamond, Daniel Sterling, Logan Alane, and Justice El Sayed. Because of all of our around performance at CIF individuals, we are named CIF champs. <laughs> And now prom is in season. This means everybody is worrying about what dress they want to wear, even if it is subconsciously messaging them in their sleep. TV is making that a lot easier for the students this year. We hosted a prom formal wear drive where students donated prom dresses that are no longer in use in their household. Um, we are very excited for the gander that all of our students will have this upcoming week. And then Mock Tile just took the stage for one last time. Um, our team has been working hard all season long, and they practiced for many long hours in the courtroom. And it was their final debate of the season, and one of the participants said that they'll very much miss it, and it's a bit bittersweet ending, but now they get their weekends back at least. Recently, our school held a spirit day, Rhyme Without Reason, where the student body dressed up with a friend or multiple people as things that rhyme for no reason. For example, some of my personal faves were Almost 80 and Crazy Cat Lady, or Hooper and Stormtrooper, and my friend and I dressed up as Nike and White Tee, so I wore a white shirt and my friend just wore all Nike clothes. Our dancers are getting excited to be showcased in our Dance Evo. Uh, we see performances from Beginning Dance, Ignite, um, our dance classes, and our Advanced Dancer, Alliance and Vitality. Um, our Ohana and Haka team, uh, as well as Ballet Folklorico and Swing Dance Club. I've been every single year, and it is one of my favorite events, and I'm definitely going somewhere between March 8th and 10th. Oh, I'm again. <laughs> Not too long ago, we hosted our biggest opportunity for our students that are going to make it to our big screens. Uh, we had our annual talent show, and this year is called The Golden Buzzer. We had many singing acts with all different ranges, some dancing, full bands, and a segment from a comedian. I was one of the judges, and it was fun to mess with the audience w for some of the acts. It was fun embarrassing Lana when she was a judge. <laughs> On March 2nd, a number of our cultural clubs are co gathering together for a day of solidarity after event. There will be games, workshops, food, and lots of opportunities to bring more students together. And next week, we're hosting our annual putt-putt tournament for students to participate in during lunch. There will be up to teams of four, and the winners will be receiving trophies and lunch for the entire team. We're utilizing some of the grass spots around campus and setting up a few different courses. And then our juniors are very much looking forward the next few months on our campus. We have prepped for them the annual cast test. <laughs> um, we told them all about it, all of the details and information in our courtroom themed cast rally, and we're excited to see how they do. That sums up some of the things on our campus in the last month. Once more, thank you for having us, and we're always excited to be here. I'm Alicia. And I'm Lana. And, and stay, stay golden. golden. Thanks, Alicia and Lana. Next up, TVA Spotlight with Edgar Diaz. All right, good evening, members of the board and staff. I am proud to represent TVA with the Spotlight today. It is always a pleasure to get back into the classroom. I know you guys have been going on tours of schools, from what I hear, and I get to go on those tours as well to either visit with members or come up with issues, and I just happen to walk into a very pleasurable time for maybe next year you want to check that out, is visit an elementary campus on Valentine's Day. Uh, just walking on a campus, I didn't quite know what I felt. Was it the pulsating bodies? Was it the sugar coming through them? Was it the energy? Uh, I'll tell you a veteran teacher tip number 1,274, conditions that create energy in a classroom or school. Valentine's Day, Halloween, wind, rain, and treats. 
Uh, that day had all had three of the conditions for excitement, but good times. There are plenty of parent volunteers on hand to lend in the festivities, which is always a great partnership to enhance the educational experience of our students. Uh, noticing all the smiling faces and bags of loot that students were walking out of in the elementary classroom, our educators provided a great learning experience, uh, and they left very quickly, may I add, because two people, I knocked on doors and they were gone by 15 minutes after the time. Uh, but what does it take to provide such positive experiences on a daily basis? It provides, it needs a lot of time. Time to plan, time to evaluate, time to implement. If you work with a team of paraprofessionals, like many of our special education teachers, you need time to collaborate. Many of our educators work with the team to ensure that students receive the minutes of services offered in FAPE. And if you're in a classroom with students with high needs, the time that you set aside to assess and write up the plan is not always available. That is why we are engaged with the district to provide educators a time to meet the requirements of the Individual Education Plan, or IEP. This is called case management. Many of our educators take many hours after the day to ensure that they not only plan the instructional day, but also to prepare the IEP for each student. This means that as IEP deadlines appear, educators are taking home data and spending late into the night to develop a plan that is best for each student before they come to the IEP meeting where they work as a team with parents and other professionals to develop that education plan for students. Uh, if you've not been in the SDC elementary classroom, I recommend that you pop in and commend the her her heroic work that is done every day. It is definitely a calling, one that they cherish, but it does not mean they should bear the brunt of the requirements needed to meet legal deadlines. TUSD should support them and identify what they need to successfully carry out their duties. Recruiting educational professionals is becoming difficult in all areas, and we should do everything we can to retain individuals who care for students receiving the best education at TUSD and not let them burn out. This applies for other solutions or other situations that are happening uh, around the school. Part of it is coming on the shadows of uh, Counselor Appreciation Day. Uh, looking at the high school, in regards to counselors there, uh, we're looking to make sure that there is a solution that is in place there that helps counselors reach students as much as they can, uh, not only just in the um, planning of their, their day, but also like their classes, but also in making sure they can do those tier one uh, interventions that are so sadly needed. Uh, and also in providing some kind of solution at the middle school for IEP support, creating time for those counselors, again, to also meet with students to make those meaningful relations, relationships and create that support when it's needed uh, in middle school. Our elementary teachers uh, participated in a pilot of multiple social studies curriculums in elementary over the last year to evaluate, well, at least since August, to evaluate which provide rich learning resources for students. Uh, publishers usually provide a resource, textbook, less, some lesson plans, some other resources to use, but educators are the ones to bring it to life by relying on the California state standards. It is tough work and time consuming to review curriculum and then to adapt lessons, especially when you know you may only use it one time and then move on from that. Most of, you know, we'd like to work on things so that they are ready for next year and to how to, how to build on that. But this definitely is work that is necessary. And I'd like to thank and applaud all those elementary teachers who took a majority part of their time after work to look over those materials and resources, study them, and then provide that feedback for the benefit of our students. Uh, as board leaders, I do respect the time you have invested into building working relationships with each other and with us, the educators. I know I was here Tuesday when you guys had that workshop, and I appreciate the time Mr. Kramrowski spent on the Monday prior to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one about our respective roles and how we both approach our positions. It was also a pleasure to spend time with you at the CTA San Gregorio District School Board Dinner and get to know your background. Attending were Trustees Komrowski, Warisma, Schwartz, and Gonzalez. And from the TVA Executive Board, our Treasurer Amber Cott was there and our Membership Coordinator, Kerry Bodemer, who's sitting right there. All right. <laughs> uh, lastly, TVA takes pride in our relationships in the community we're able to build. Our partnership with Community Mission of Hope uh, takes another further step this next month. In March, we're set to paint a house in French Valley area, and we'll start advertising for volunteers to help make our community stronger. I invite you to attend and work by our member's side to help strengthen our community. Appreciate it. Good night. Thanks, Mr. Diaz. <laughs> next up, we have CSCA Spotlight with Andrew Enrique. Oh, there he goes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to pull out my homework here. 
my fifth grade teacher, Miss Campbell, would have been proud. I come before you guys today as, as, as the trustees of Temecula Valley. I'm speaking to the five of you directly. We want you to make us a priority. Over the last eight months, your classified employees have been working without a contract. And we are now getting ready to go into March. We have averaged about, about two meetings a month. We don't meet or negotiate like the teachers do. We're a different organization. We have lots of little layers, but we meet as a team with the district. We don't have um, ad hoc committees. We don't have ad hoc committees. So we don't have the opportunity to meet a couple of times with the ad hoc committees and then, then bring it forward once a month to the, the regular negotiations team. Our negotiations team meets, like I said, on average once a month. We have changed the way we've negotiated and it's kind of helped our relationship with, with the, the cabinet. We have switched to what is called interest-based bargaining. And for those of you who do not know what interest-based bargaining is, I'll give you a short quiz or a short uh, uh, definition. Interest-based bargaining is when each side comes together and they brainstorm. And when they brainstorm, we come up with great ideas. But as you know, as an educator, when, you, when you're brainstorming, everything's rolling. We get going and then we stop for a month or we stop for three weeks. Things could get lost. Things could get forgotten. An idea that could be coming up from, one of, from either side is now gone. We've lost that opportunity. I am asking you guys to direct the negotiations team of TVUSD to meet with us more than twice a month with those long periods in between. It's a struggle, I understand. We all have things that we need to do. But eight months is a long time. It, sh it makes my negotiations team and it makes our employees and our members feel like we're discounted. Eight months is a very long time. And the, through the process of interest-based bargaining, those things take time. In order to build a structure of contract language with ideas that are going back and forth and picking and choosing what the best options are for our employees is important, but those things will get lost over those two or three weeks in between. added to the, the, what we believe, because in the past we have met with the, with the district and we have had more than a few hours to negotiate. You, you tie in that with our lunches because we have to take our lunches and we have to eat. And then we have our caucuses. We're, we're maybe negotiating a total of three or four, three or four hours total, maybe. We, meet, we, we were meeting from eight o'clock until, till, uh, or I'm sorry, 10 o'clock until three. A lot of time gets lost both sides, I'm not saying that it's, it's any one side, but the fact that we're only meeting that short period of time with a contract that is, we're out. It was out, in, in case you guys didn't know, it was out in July, July 1st, we were working without a contract. And that affects a lot of things relationship-wise. So I ask you again, please direct the, the executive cabinet to meet with us more. I have requested it as well, but I figure I'd ask both sides. You guys are important, you guys are in charge, you guys can help with this. So, like I said, please take into consideration, we are without a contract and we are feeling less than. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you, Andy. Alrighty, we're at public comments. The governing board welcomes public comments. This is for or this is time for open session public comments. Public comments are allowed, up to a maximum of three minutes for comment. For non-agenda items, for consent agenda item topics, a limit of three minutes will be allowed from one speaker, unless the item has been placed on the published agenda in accordance with the Brown Act. There should be no action taken. No discussion will be made regarding personal. Issues in open session, all public comments are an important part of the board meeting and are given careful consideration by the governing board. Are there any remaining, or sorry, are there any remaining public comments on any agendized items this evening and which ones? So yes, we have 16 general public comments this evening and then we have an additional four public comments on three different items throughout the agenda. And so I can interrupt each time we get to one of those agenda items and give you the, the 
public comment prior to calling the item to the floor. Okay, and we have 16. So I will do two minutes apiece. We may sacrifice time on this, but we don't sacrifice speakers, so hence the two minutes instead of three. Okay, first speaker, Will, I can't read the last name. Uh, Pina. Pina. Yes. Mr. Pina, welcome. On, oh, there you go, it's on, good to go. All righty, uh, first I'd like to start off by saying I'm a former active duty member. Uh, Marine for three overseas tours, one combat tour, disabled veteran, a believer of the Constitution, and I definitely know what it means to be free after seeing all the things that I've seen. My eldest daughter is 29 years old and she was in high school and the topic at the time was the acceptance of people who love each other. You know, love, love, love each other. Now, my 15 year old topic is dealing with a topic that is, uh, I've been monitoring since it came from the East Coast, CRT. This information, this misinformation has been used to cause damage, not only da to cause damage, but to use fears to those who don't do any research for themselves and put those people that like to instill fear in power of, uh, positions of power. And we know who those are. Sir, in first meeting, you brought up that the, Constitu uh, the Pledge of Allegiance was the basis that you, why you were here. You didn't bring up the Constitution, where we solemnly swore to defend it against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Did we not, sir? In the third meeting, you stood here warning people that were not with your views and saying, you've been warned, you've been warned, you've been warned. However, your people, nothing. Sir, I don't agree. Either they disagree or they don't agree, or whatever you want to call it, but you have to be fair. That's it, okay? Now, a fellow board member asked you a simple question about the dealings you had behind, and when they asked you the question, you said, I don't like being interrogated. Sir, you're Army, you're a veteran, Thank you. Next speaker, Deborah Adams. Abrams, excuse me. In the military and in top business schools, leaders are taught to move into new positions carefully and not to make sudden changes. It's important to learn about how things function before deciding you know what needs to change. This is because new leaders don't understand enough about how organizations operate to know that their changes will be positive and not destructive. Implementing changes without proper consideration can lead to distrust and hurt the district. It's important to consider the potential consequences of making changes too quickly. When changes are made without sufficient planning and discussion, they can cause confusion and disrupt the stability of the district. This can result in a lack of trust from the community and make it harder for teachers and administrators to do their jobs. You've come into board positions with a highly successful school system. The actions you've been taking are threatening the stability of the district. I'm watching the districts that have taken similar actions to the ones you've been taking. In your first meeting, you mentioned that no one is upset with the CRT resolution in Paso Robles. That statement's absolutely incorrect. The federal government opened an investigation into the Paso Robles uh, Board for discrimination. There has also been a petition with hundreds upon hundreds of signatures to replace one of the extremist board members who's been extremely vocal against CRT and LGBTQ people. So that doesn't sound like no issues to me. I've watched the instability in Orange County as the school board seconds. removed their superintendent with no warning and replaced her with their chosen candidate. Just this past week, that replacement superintendent resigned, leading to further volatility. At last week's workshop, you said that the bungling of the special meeting to hire outside counsel was because you didn't know what you could and could not do with the Brown Act. But you've got plenty of resources, you're just choosing not to use them. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Next up, we have Steve Campos. Next up, we have Steve Campos. Hello, good evening. Um, so I wanted just to bring up a couple concerns and things to ponder. Uh, a while back at the board workshop, um, we had mentioned the success of the SELPA and some of the things that I think need to be taken into consideration and is have teachers ever been surveyed about how they feel about us pulling from the county SELPA as opposed to doing it on our own. Uh, I know I've talked to a lot of teachers uh, that are in the special ed, ed department and they did not say that we have received any better services. As a matter of fact, that some of them have been lacking. Uh, on top of that, um, it seems that our elementary special education teachers are also suffering from uh, an, a, a caseload and things being thrown on top of them just to make their, their workload a little more difficult. So, you know, I plead that you just make sure that you guys release their load. We know that there are new laws coming in and there's documentation that they have to do, but consider what they already have on top of their plate. Um, Mr. Enriquez mentioned a couple of things that I'd like to also bring up. Um, Within our custodial team cleaning, uh, there are two different types of cleaning. We have team cleaning here. It's one of the most inefficient um, ways of doing it where we have teams traveling from site to site. Almost no other district, at least in the Valley, does that because it's inefficient. It's ineffective. And instead, uh, the people who I've talked to prefer zone cleaning because a zone cleaning system basically says you have three people at a site or two people. You have a, a day lead there. There's up and down accountability. They can sit there and say, hey, um, well, and the last thing, so consider that, and then also transportation. Our transportation team is not being treated fairly. They're not being treated with respect, and that's important because they need that, and we need to make sure that we're taking care of them because they're the ones that transport our clients every day to school, and when they don't feel safe and they don't feel respected, it's a detriment to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Next up, we have Cameron Stout. Hello, my name is Cameron Stout. I have two children who are students at Great Oak High School, and I also am a member of the graduating first graduating class from CHS. I wanted to take a moment to thank Dr. Jody McClay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for all of your work that you've done for our students. I also want to recognize the numerous educators and staff members who are here and have served our children selflessly. Thank you. You are a reason why our AP programs and our schools are among the best in the country. Sincerely, thank you. With that said, let's talk about the problematic changes being introduced to our curricula. How these problematic changes will affect our AP programs and high educational standards our schools are known for. Altering these programs will harm all of our students. How can we, as a community, discuss this? We cannot jeopardize our children's education and ignore our very real history. We, as a team, must find a way to move forward without damaging the programs that make our schools stand apart from others. I will leave you with this quote from Frederick Douglass, the from his, <laughs> Frederick Douglass's The Blessing, Blessings of Liberty and Education. Education means emancipation. It means light and liberty. It means the uplifting of the souls of a man into the glorious light of truth, the light by which men can only be set free. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Stout. Next up, we have, it looks like, Carrie Downs. Hi, I'm Carrie Downs and I teach at PABA and I don't actually have much to say, but I stood in the rain for a couple hours so I decided to come up on the microphone and say hi to everybody. Um, uh, I just wanted to say, Jody, uh, last year at the board meetings in Zoom, I watched them and I watched everybody on them and I watched some people eat cereal and stuff. It was really fun, but I just wanted to say that being a board member is a lot of work and it's hard and your jobs are hard. and Everyone, I wanted to know, like, there was so much negativity last year, 
And I wanted to let you know that there were positive people, we were just sleeping because it was really hard. <laughs> so all the teachers, we were asleep because we were working really hard. But I want to know we saw you and you're appreciated. Um, and my son goes to um, high school and he might go to AP. And I hope that everything will be fine. And I'm like very optimistic about that. But I do worry that some teachers, high school teachers mostly, are feeling a little apprehensive. And they're feeling worried about what they can and cannot say. And I, I would hate that a child would come up to a teacher with an open conversation and a teacher would be like, well, I don't know. I just can't. And I would hate that for an AP high school class. Um, and since the custodial staff um, talked about it, I just want to say that PABA has the best custodial staff ever and uh, transportation. And uh, I think we seconds. should just support our um, supportive staff because they're also amazing. And I'll just end with the governing board is here to provide each student with an education of the highest quality. And I just want to make sure that we keep that high quality and have a good day. Thank you, Mrs. Downs. Next up, we have Slim Killens. Before my time starts, I'd like to hand this. This is a foil soap uh, sweater. You can pass on if you want to test these hand gloves. Mr. Killens, you got to start speaking. Start the time. You can't. It doesn't matter. Ask the question. Ask the question. So in the last five months, while exercising my First Amendment right, I was physically assaulted by two white female students at two high schools. Last year, I was punched in the head. I sent you guys emails. Two weeks ago, one threw a quart of used motor oil all over me. <clears throat> Also, a white male uh, was aggressively yelling threats. I pressed criminal charges, waiting for a court date, grabbed my two signs, and angrily threw them. Why is it no outcry for the hate crime perpetrated against me by three white people? Apparently, everyone is afraid of woke activists, including the police and sheriff's department. There's a fundamental difference between black history and critical race theory. Black history teaches the achievements of black people during the brutal hardship of the racist Democrat Party and the Jim Crow laws that perpetuated white supremacy. In order to maintain their power and keep Negro slaves on the plantation, they have introduced a new type of deadly drug into black community, CRT and race, equity, diversity, inclusion, two mind-altering drugs that impair judgment and produce a euphoric high, giving black people a false sense of supremacy that is racist. Truth without love is a travesty, but what you're doing, seconds. love without truth, is a lie. So we will continue to publicly tell the truth in love and honk our car horns until some change takes place. Thank you, Dr. K, Jen, and Danny for standing strong against the fierce opposition directed against you. I challenge anyone on this board, in this audience, and throughout California to two-hour public debate challenging the Democratic Party lies on critical race theory, Planned Parenthood, the definition of marriage, transgenderism. Thank you, Mr. Killens. Time's up. <laughs> Next, we have Jessica Woodrow. Um, hello, I'm here to speak about the gross misinformation that has been happening about the student walkouts. I was there at CHS. It was entirely peaceful. We were not harming anyone and no students were at risk. We even had people there to help us as well as adults that made sure that we were safe. And when we got there, we were all able to speak our own opinions, including parents about how we felt that this ban affected us because we are in the TVUSD and our opinions do matter. And I find that it is reprehensible that some board members will come up here and speak about that negatively. 
We're using our platform as leaders and also as young people to voice our opinions, and I feel like that's important. I also wanted to address that there's a page on Instagram that district that the District 3 representative and the District 2 representative follows that has harassed my BSU advisor as well as me and has continuously posted misinformation. I know that some district board members say that they do not use Instagram anymore because they're not campaigning, but I do know that District Area 3 representative uses hers actively as she has messaged me before. So I feel that she should unfollow that page, especially because she came up to my BSU advisor after the last meeting and tried to console her. Um, you all embolden the people that make these misinformative posts and you embolden these racists online to harass me and others that have different opinions of them. I am still a child, I'm 17 years old, and just because I have a differing opinion does not mean it's okay to harass me on social media. I also would like to say that I use my platform in order to inform others about how I feel as a black student in this district, and I wanna leave you all with a scripture. Mark 8:36. for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You may have gained your position, but you have lost your soul by continuously stepping on the feelings of people of color in this district and these students in this district. Um, you also represent, I am a student that you have to represent not just your conservative buddies. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you, Jessica. Next up, we have Christina Massa. Christine. Christine. Well, hello, school board. Today I'm here to talk about Stunt the Sport, which you see on my shirt. Um, but first, before I start, I'd like to commend some of the educators I've had, uh, always had respect for, but come to know better in the last few months, just a few of our amazing staff. And I'd like to start with Dr. Jody McClay. She's done such incredible, incredible grace and leadership in managing requests of a new board while still being responsive to parents and putting our students and staff first. I truly believe the amazing results you all acknowledged at last month's meeting are a testament to Jody's leadership. And I recently got to know Diane Cox, who's my daughter's English teacher at Chaparral, but she's also given my family support in her role with freshman students with unique needs. Her courage and empathy and passion for her students needs to be recognized. And last but not least, I'm gonna mention Cindy Hurley, who is my son's third grade teacher. Chris Dixon was our principal then, and we were flipping the classroom. And even though he's now a freshman at ASU, she's still on my son's list of favorite teachers. But back to Stunt the Sport, which you see here on my shirt. Stunt is a female primary competitive sport with a season that starts next week. It's CIF sanctioned, and our athletes can even get scholarships. TV, Grado, and Shep all have varsity teams. In fact, Shep's varsity captain is here tonight. And TV and Shep also have JV teams, chaparral for the first time. I've had the pleasure of seeing Mrs. Barkley at most of these events because our daughters compete. Now, Mrs. Where's my know you know people on the chaparral team, but we've yet to see you at any chaparral games for any sport. Now, you told me in email that you're very, very busy, but you weren't too busy to speak to the Temecula Valley Republican Women's Lunch today, which has nothing to do with our school, so I think you can find the time. We'd much rather see you around Chaparral supporting our athletes, especially our female athletes. Empowered women empower women in our schools, am I right? These young women work hard, and I, my daughters have the ibuprofen ice packs and KT tape to prove it. So I extend the invitation to all of you to come support our JV and varsity stunt teams. And in order to save paper so our teachers don't have to use their Saturdays making copies at the UPS store, I'll follow up on email with the league schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Massa. We have next Hunter Shelton. My name is Hunter Shelton, and I'm a junior at Temecula Valley High School. I will cut to the chase. The goal of education is to prepare students for the rest of their lives. Education does not teach them how to think, but rather teaches them um, to think for themselves through the information that they're presented with through a curriculum, which needs to be as in-depth, thorough, and true to reality as possible to enable students to grow up in a world that they can understand and find a place in. Because I personally believe, at least, every student deserves a place in the world where they can feel comfortable, secure, and supported. That said, Ideally, education should not have holes in it. Information given to students by schools can't be incomplete or one-sided or short-sided or however you want to put it because that makes for an incomplete education. And an incomplete education is incorrect education. If a student is given information that they can't resonate with, how are they supposed to find a place for themselves in the world that they can't resonate with? How are they supposed to understand themselves? 
How are students from differing ethnic and cultural backgrounds ever supposed to feel comfortable and confident if accurate information about their history is kept from them in schools? How are students in the LGBTQ plus community supposed to be comfortable and confident in themselves if accurate information about their identity and orientation is treated as a bad influence in her education? The district cannot keep up this pattern of restricting the information being given to students because it makes for an incomplete and incorrect education for tens seconds. of thousands of students. And if a school fails to educate just one student, then that is a school that fails to educate. And a school that fails to educate is no better than a prison. And a district made up of prisons is a dictatorship. And I will not live in a dictatorship. Thank you, trans rights. Thank you. Next up, we have Marie Requin. Sorry if I mispronounce that. Marie Requin. Requin. R E G U E N. Is that the, the last name? Is it R-E-G-U-E-N? Then, then, then it's not okay. the same I'm person. not sure if it's you, I'm sorry. We have a Marie Regwin, or it's, yeah, Regwin. How do you spell your last name for clarity? Oh. Is this yours? Do you want to come look at it? The pronunciation. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mr. President, Madam Clerk, and members of the board. I am a recently retired teacher of 31 years in this valley, and I just felt I had a responsibility to come up here and mention something that um, really bothered me from last board meeting. Um, all here already know that there are three new board members, and these step these new board members, whether they, we agree with them or not, they do represent students, parents, educators, and communities. At the same time, they have families, they have jobs, busy lives, and they're now um, in positions, uh, not all knowing yet, still learning, and they're learning the ins and outs of procedures. As an educator, I took a look at these new members as I would have students in my classroom, brand new students, eager, willing to learn, do well, but not yet knowing all I would need them to know while doing their best to make their way into a new position. As an educator, it was not only my responsibility to make new students feel comfortable, welcome, but also to guide them in how the classroom was run. It was also up to me to be an example, to ensure that other students treated them with respect, dignity, and humility. It was my responsibility to ensure that they felt accepted and to show them grace and patience when they faltered. What I saw at the last meeting saddened me and to be more honest, I was appalled. I watched, 30 seconds. I watched as a new board member was publicly belittled and mockingly corrected as she attempted to make a motion. Frankly, it brought me to tears. Would this be how I would treat a student? In a room full of community members, parents, and most of all students, the example set was how to humiliate and mock someone for not knowing. What if instead we had witnessed a positive correction, kindness, and grace when making an innocent error? The board has made national headlines and is being followed all over from coast to coast. We're watching. Thank you, Ms. Boy. Next up, we have Kelly Maxey. Your time's up. I'm very sorry. Order, your time's up. Thank you for your patience. Good evening. So Jen, mostly I'm talking to you tonight because I recently saw one of your very dramatic Instagram posts calling Jody McClay's leadership into question um, after wondering whether or not you really even had the experience or the education to do so. I thought I would come tonight and talk about what good leadership really is. So I had the privilege to attend last week's special board meeting. This meeting was a perfect example of what good leaders do. 
Dr. McClay planned this lesson, this session, with the goal of bringing you all together to communicate and bond as a group. It was designed to give you an opportunity to reflect and share some of your concerns, to develop a collective vision, to grow a team building spirit, to listen and be heard about your commitment to our schools. That's what good leaders do. They bring people together, they quell the storm, they foster cooperation, they encourage communication. Good leaders like Dr. McClay help people get better. I see it every month at your board meetings as you stumble through the process of leading this group. Dr. McClay is there helping you and guiding you every step of the way. Why? Because that's what good leaders do. As an audience member at last week's meeting, I also got so much out of that training. I left wanting to trust you all, wanting to believe that we were making progress on a unified front, that some of you were starting to see the awesomeness of our schools and programs. Rather than coming in with your sledgehammers and egos like the first few board meetings, it seemed like we were making some progress. I personally love seeing Danny at the CT Super Bowl. I enjoyed seeing Dr. Komrowski and Mr. Schwartz at the drumline performance at Great Oak High School. I see that some of you are trying, and I appreciate that. However, it seems like you've missed the concept of these meetings, Jen. You, you kept bringing things back to yourself and spotlighting your comments. It's pretty I'm clear sorry, to I me. I'm sorry, I forgot your 30 seconds. You have seven. Uh, the school board position and all the decisions you make are not about you. It's not even about the people who voted for you. Thank you, Mrs. Maxey. Next up, we have Christopher Bout. You know that. Good evening, board. My name is Chris Bout, local parent, local businessman. I'll cut to the chase given the abbreviated time. Firstly, you guys are doing a fabulous job. Really appreciate you, I support you, everything that you're doing. Danny, Jen, Dr. Joe, God bless you all. I wanna to call to light one of Stephen Schwartz's top three priorities that he campaigned in back in 2020. His number one priority was curriculum reform. He campaigned to reform the curriculum to, to, to include harmful LGBTQ issues. In other words, with all due respect, Mr. Schwartz, you're a groomer. You injected highly polarizing, highly politicized issue, what is supposed to be a nonpartisan seat, which is actually why I voted for McClure. Then to compound matters, last meeting uh, on the 14th, you accused other board members of injecting um, a personal political view into their governing approach. Your comments are on, on tape, Mr. Schwartz. Your campaign on harmful LGB um, issues, and, and then you chastise those who oppose you? Wow, I, I mean, what arrogance. I mean, what hypocrisy. I mean, shame on you, Mr. Schwartz, with all due respect. 30 seconds. Actually, Mr. Schwartz, uh, the three new trustees are doing exactly what we, the voters, what we, the parents, have asked them to do, which is to give parents a voice, to stand up for parental rights, to stand up for truth, to stand up for dignity, to stand up for common sense. Will you, will you do that too, Mr. Schwartz? Do you think you're capable of that? I know you can't respond because of the Brown Act, but if you can support parental rights, maybe you Thank you, Mr. Bell. Next up, we have Dale Stewart. Thank you. Dale Stewart. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the last couple of speakers gave me uh, the opportunity to say things that uh, speak of things that I didn't think I would. And uh, in years past, I spent a lot of time going to a lot of uh, uh, courts and to a lot of uh, board meetings. And uh, the clerk of the board and the clerk of the courts and the superintendents of the school boards, they help 
uh, conduct the meetings all the time. That's part of their jobs. That's what they do. And the courts and the, and the boards wouldn't function so well if they didn't have good people who know the protocols and know the laws, and they assist all the time. And so I just wanted to, to point that out. And uh, also, uh, uh, to follow on, I think, what the last gentleman said, uh, tonight I'd like to ask the, uh, all the members of the board not to cast your vote in favor of Mr. Schwartz being named to fill a vacancy on the CSBA Delegate Assembly. His recent behavior uh, regarding the student walkouts and his comments on his delegate application preclude him from being a fair representative of the board. That's how I feel about that. And furthermore, Mr. Schwartz, I ask that you resign your position on the board. I feel that your participation in these student walkouts leaves you in a situation that's dangerously close to being in violation of California Penal Code 272, which is contributing to the delinquency of a minor. A violation is stipulated as any act or omission that tends to cause or encourage a minor to become a habitual uh, truant. Uh, one such seconds. occurrence on your uh, part, I feel, is a lack of judgment. Twice is a pattern of behavior. Three times could very well be termed habitual behavior. And uh, I, if I had a child enrolled in this district, I would uh, file a complaint against you and then I would uh, also uh, refer you to uh, the proper authorities to have them look into that. Because I do feel very much that you are encouraging truancy and you use the guise of supporting First Amendment rights. And, uh, and that's what uh, my message Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Next up, we have Bernard Budney. Bernard Budney. Good evening, my name is Bernard Budney. I'm retired from the U.S. Customs Service. Uh, Abraham Lincoln once stated, the philosophy of schools in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. Without having sustained a godly philosophy in schools, we have been led to a certainly less godly one in government. If Christian beliefs and values are being erased from a child's mind, what values are replacing those values? What radical values will we find eventually in our children's textbooks? What will be involved in students' counseling? Will parental guidance and values be overruled and replaced by others? Will parents' authority be replaced, period? What kind of adults will these children become? I am reminded of a billboard seen in Old Town, Florida, which read, when schools had prayer and Bibles, they had no drugs, and they had no need for police presence either. What can we do? Write not one letter, but many to the local school board, and be present there. Numbers not only count, they speak. Write to our political leaders and hold them accountable. It wasn't business, tourism, and other infra infrastructure that made Temecula one of the very safest of communities in America, according to one government agency. It was due to the character of her people. Ask how and why we were able to achieve that distinction. And if we are seconds. not able to prevail as a by and large Christian God-fearing community and what has been called by some the Bible Belt of Southern California, then the future would not seem much to bode well in the res this respect for the remainder of the nation. A more recent president, Ronald Reagan, once said that freedom is never more than a generation away from extinction. He also said we are never defeated until we give up on God. Don't give up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Button. Next up, we have Chris Lindbergh. Good evening. Um, tonight I understand that in closed meeting there was some kind of discussion about a superintendent evaluation or progress report. And I wanted to make sure that I made a public comment tonight about Dr. McClay and her leadership. And first of all, I want to say that we have to note that under Dr. McClay's leadership, TVUSD is the highest ranked district in our county. In addition, her 30 years of various roles within the district give her the depth and breadth of knowledge so that she understands all the processes of education here in California and she has an understanding of how to lead our district to success. 
Some of the words some of my colleagues, I'm a teacher, uh, gave to describe Dr. McClay are professional, motivating, inspiring, empathetic, all about the kids, informed, a great communicator, a person of honesty and integrity, a person with an incredibly positive attitude, a leader who has a vision, and a great listener. I've seen Dr. McClay's interactions with many previous iterations of this school board. Um, I've seen her work with various employee associations, uh, unions, and also the community. Um, being a former union leader, I have had the chance to meet with her and go through problems that we could come to some kind of a solution with because of our, our commitment to the kids. Um, our district needs this outstanding superintendent, TBUST teachers, are, 30 seconds. count themselves lucky to have her as a leader of our team. Thank you, Ms. Sandberg. Last speaker, we have Greg Langworthy. Good evening, board. Um, just here to commend you on your last board meeting, uh, Valentine's Day meeting, the 14th. Um, it was impressive to me that you guys spoke directly to each other around the table. I think that is much more conducive to conversation than doing it this way. I thought you made some really good progress getting your grievances out and responding to them. You know, and, that, and that's part of communication. You know, I've been married many years, and my wife's favorite verse is, a gentle answer, answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Um, and I thought you guys did a great job, honestly. I um, want to say one thing. Um, I think one of the things that would really help the community, um, and you guys too, is when you have a grievance with another person, speak directly to that person face to face, try to resolve your grievance that way first before jumping to conclusions about their motivations or what they're really thinking. Um, get, get their um, opinion first before judging that person. Um, so anyway, I think you guys are making progress. I'm, I'm, I'm Schwartz, or Stephen Schwartz, um, I think you've got something to add to the board. Allison, you do, Jen, you do, Joseph, you do, Danny, you do. You all have different gifts and talents. And as you work together, which is not easy, you're gonna really benefit the whole, whole community. But I just wanted to give seconds. you that encouragement. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Langworthy. We have one public comment about consent or about the consent calendar. So we can take that personnel. Cindy Lopez. Good evening, uh, Cindy Lopez. I'm a speech language pathologist in the district, and um, I'll refer to our group as SLPs um, for those of you that are new to the vernacular. Um, SLPs, okay? So there is um, an item that I wanted to speak to having to do with hiring contract SLPs, um, and I want to give you some insight on that. Um, and I can speak with some authority on this because I've been in this profession for 25 years. And so let me just tell my story. I actually was recruited by Ms. Velez some seven years ago to step away from a private practice of 17 years, my private practice, to come and serve in the public school setting. And I haven't looked back. Um, during that hiring process, my onboarding actually took place with Dr. McClay. And um, she took that time to not only onboard myself, but 70 other new hires to make sure that we were up to speed with the culture and the expectation of Temecula Valley Unified. And I thought that that was an invaluable experience. The, lastly, Ms. Nicole Deus was one of my first principals when I got hired just about seven years ago. So you can see in that short amount of time, the impact that this, these few people on, on the cabinet had on me. So what is my point of this? Um, SLPs are a unicorn. 30 seconds. Okay. 
So we are hard to come by. And I am asking the board, I'm asking you to please consider. What we're feeling right now is a lot of instability and a lot of hostility. And so what will happen moving forward is going to be very hard to recruit people like me to come to our district. And we were already at a deficit with SLPs in the nation. So I urge you to please consider that moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Five minute recess.